everyone, it's Jarrett Moore with the Enterprise DNA team. In today's video, I am going to cover a DAX function called round. And for those of you that are Excel users, you will be familiar with how the round feature is used in Excel and it's used very similar here in Power BI. But what happened a few months ago is I was doing a DAX calculation and doing some conditional highlighting for a client and I could not figure out why two numbers uh, that are basically uh, percentages, I was telling the, high, the conditional highlighting to highlight if these two numbers did not match. And I went down a huge rabbit hole in trying to figure out why these did not uh, match and after talking to one of our enterprise DNA experts, Brian, I figured out that all I needed to do was just use the round function. So without further ado, let's hop on over to the web and look at some of the Microsoft documentation for this. Not really a whole lot of information on this. Um, basically, it's the round function. And then um, basically the number is the number you want to round. So in my case, that would be like the, the, the measure and then the number of digits uh, that you want to round to. Um, you can also do this uh, greater than zero. Um, you can do this to the left of the decimal point. Lots of different options. Uh, link to this will be in the description below. But that's a little bit about the documentation. Let's head on over to Power BI Desktop and I'll go over the situation that I ran into um, as I was trying to do some conditional highlighting um, for my client here. So this is the table right here that is de de definitely broke down. It's broken down by job. Um, I just added this job count here so we could see the total amount of, um, of jobs. And this right here is a, is, a, is a margin calculation. So let's go ahead and just start typing in margin over here. And then all the different margins will show up. Um, for this particular one, uh, in order to get this uh, was a measure I call margin target test. So basically just uh, you know dividing the margin um, because typically this was a, a, a number and wasn't in, in, a, uh, in a percentage. So in order to get the percentage, that's what I had to do in order to, to get that number. But basically what I was trying to do in the original measure is actually say, okay, if this number doesn't match the actual um, margin, um, which was this number right here, then I wanted it to highlight an orange. So in order to show you that, let's head on over here to the tab that I have labeled called incorrect, um, or um, this will show you the incorrect um, values that are being highlighted. As you can see, you know the margin here is 37.5, and then these two numbers match, which really, in, in hindsight, it should not, these two numbers match that so this should not um, be highlighted. So these are, are ones that are showing wrong because of the original way I have to set up the measure. So let's have a look at that measure. And I believe that measure was this, this is job info margin version two. So basically I created a margin. Um, it said mar a variable, it says margin no good. Uh, and basically if the testing, which is this measure right here, does not match this margin calculations, I want, want to give it a one, and if not, I want to give it a zero. And then basically here is with the completed margin is, you know, I wanted to calculate the number of jobs um, that had that, um, that were in this certain status, which was job completed, and then the margin did not match from above. And then basically just returned an if function just to create that number there to where I could get a six or a zero. And that's what I use when I conditionally highlight um, in the background here. So if I, if I do open this info page uh, margin right here and I go to the conditional formatting and we'll go to background color um, and, and basically uh, with this is I created, um, you, you have the different options here. I, I choose the, real, the, the rules um, option here and then basically I gave that number a six if it was out of compliance and then I hit okay. So that's, that's what gave the orange background there. But as you can see with this right here, just by saying if this number doesn't match this number, highlight it, you can see that these jobs 
right here were showing correctly, but they were highlighting as incorrect. So what I had to do was, as we all know, I had to use the round function in order to get this to work correctly. So if I go over to the round correct tab here, and I go over here to the info page margin, um, and I look at this background, and let's see what measure I use for that. And that is called job info margin. So we'll look at that. This right here is the correct formula. So very similar to the one I just showed you there, but I just used that round function. Um, and then I just used each one of the measures and then I wanted to go three decimal spots. That's why I, I chose three over here and three over here. And then just give it that same one or zero. And then basically the, the, the rest of the measure was the same as you saw before um, with the version two. So by doing that, you can see all these are highlighted in orange because these numbers do not match. So that is, it's doing what it's, it's supposed to do. So as we scroll down the page here, we can see these are all the ones that are showing um, correct. But if we go back over here to the totals page, we can see um, that these are highlighted in orange because this gives us a list of all of the jobs, whereas those other two tabs just give us results either for correct or incorrect results. So when I scroll down the page here, we'll see that this, these two numbers match, so therefore it should not be highlighted. So that's doing all these that are not highlighted are actually doing what we needed it to do and just by using the round function. So um, that's a little bit about um, the round function and for you, for those of you that are familiar with Excel, I'm sure you've probably had some experience at some point in your Excel lifetime um, of using the round function. But uh, here in DAX, if you're ever wanting to, to know why two numbers or percentages don't match, instead of going down a big long rabbit hole, try using this round function to help make your life a little bit easier. Well, that's about all that I wanted to share for today. I hope this little tip um, helps you in your future DAX endeavors. Until next time, thank you. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.